Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back for a dive in life tutorial. And this week I'm talking about the drum bus and how to use drum bus effectively. It's one of my favorites uh, from the upgrade to Ableton 10, uh, the previous upgrade, because 11 is coming. Uh, it's really one of my favorites, and uh, I use it all the time uh, on my music, on drums, basically on like a lot of stuff, on my kicks. And uh, today I want to show you a bit how uh, the drum bus really works. So um, I have this track that I'm working on, and um, this is the drum bus as I have it, but I'd like to um, get a new one from the audio effects drum bus and drag it in here and I'll go briefly through the settings to show you how powerful this unit is it is quite a beast and the volume easily gets louder so you you want to avoid making the sound super loud but I'll uh, talk more about that later in this tutorial uh, first like all the um, uh, the options that you have this is the drive where you can actually drive the signal so I have it here on the drums actually so if, well, let's play the drums first <laughs> So from the get-go, you can hear it. it's pretty pretty hardcore. <laughs> and uh, so the drive is more like the drive on the input signal. Uh, you can tell if it's like a, a soft distortion, medium distortion, or really hard clipping distortion. It's a bit like a saturator, basically. It's like drum bus is my favorite saturator. I used to use saturator a lot. Um, I used to use the, a bit warmer a lot, but now I just use the, the drum bus actually uh, whenever I need some saturation and some more harmonics to really get uh, yeah, get the sounds glued together. It's also like a great gluer, so to speak. Um, it also has a trim with a compression. I myself never use it actually. Uh, don't know. Maybe you can leave in the comments if you use it and why you use it. Maybe I should get into using the compressor. But it has a compressor with a trim, and uh, you can yeah um, have like a compression before um, the input distortion, which is this this guy. Then the crunch is more for your mid frequencies. You know, I, yeah, I have the info view open so I can uh, remind myself and you actually see what it is. Uh, I would recommend all my students always to leave info view open if you want to um, uh, learn. Uh, a particular device you know remember or re just remember what it does you know you can just check it quickly here otherwise you can always resort here up here to read the live manual and you can uh, read in there every everything um, you want to know is in this manual so if you type drum bus you know you can really get into the nitty-gritty uh, of things you know and if you type drum bus then you'll see here drum bus and they explain to you what drum bus is it's an analog style drum processor which is great to add body and character to a group of drums while gluing them together in a tight mix well that's exactly how i use it and um uh yeah the crunch is more for the mid-range frequency you can also hear it <laughs> I always have the feeling that the drive is a bit more the low end uh, of the of the spectrum. This is more your mid crunch or mid distortion. Uh, then there's this damp unit that actually damps the high frequencies. I usually have it to like 17 kilohertz, just to, yeah, it it it, it like make makes it less digital. If, if that makes sense, you know, for me it feels like it makes it less digital. You could put the transients all the way back. <laughs> To use it as a transient shaper but to be honest i still prefer transient master from native instruments or the spl transient designer is really great on um uh, on using yeah if you want to control transients of your drums but there is a transient designer in there you can also like put it the other side i'll let you hear how that sounds <laughs> So it's great to boost. I, to be honest, I never use the compression or the transient. I just use the drive to crunch the boom, and um, yeah, and the boom is great. The boom is like the, yeah, how do you call it? Low frequency enhancement. It says, but um, yeah, it just creates so much more abutment. But it's really dangerous. With the DK, you can sort of like uh, control the length, and with the frequency, you can set which key. So if if your kick is in a G, you might want to put it here, and if it's G plus here, you can click it, and it will snap it to G and then I can boom it so uh, listen to how that sounds so basically when it's really long it gets quite boomy you want to use low values but if you have it a bit shorter you can maybe bump it up a bit more you know depending on what material you're using it on uh, and then there's a dry wet I always have the dry wet a bit back 
and I use the output to make it a bit softer because adding this is, um, you know, you add a lot of like volume and basically when you then turn it on and off, uh, it creates, you know, if it's louder, it's going to sound better anyway. So you might want to check that. So how to do that, I'm going to show you now. So I'll use the drum bus that we have on this uh, on this track. So if I go to the to the channel itself, well, you see I have the drive on 20%, crunch, uh, not so much, uh, actually nothing, <laughs> and I have the boom uh, on. So if you go to this uh, to this channel, what I like to do, I always check the output here on um, the the group. It's actually on my drum and bass because you know I like to have drum and bass in uh, in a group sometimes, and then it's it's nice to to glue that all together with a drum bus. So without it, I will check the volume here. Um, you know this inf button. So I reset it, and then I check what the maximum level is. <laughs> So we can safely say it's minus 5.56. So now when I turn it on, see if it's, it's, it should not be louder than minus 5.56. You know, a little bit like point so much dB is okay. But like if it's 2 dB louder or dB louder, it's going to sound better anyway. So let's see what it does. It's softer. So let's turn it off and on and do the A-B test. Off. On. Off. And on. As you can hear, the low end gets a bit fuller. It's uh, it adds a lot of harmonics, especially because we use the boom. We could add maybe a bit of crunch. See what that does. You see, it gets louder immediately, so you might want to use a bit less. Maybe take this down a bit as well. I like it with a lot better and it's just because with this device you change also the tonality you're adding more harmonics because of the saturation and the distortion so you're actually creating more signal and more harmonics so in order to create a situation where you don't get a louder um, uh, signal you want to control the output I have to minus 4 dB so all, everything I'm adding I will take away as well uh, to make sure that I'm not like boosting it um, uh, in the in the levels and you can hear it really makes a difference and I really like the um, the yeah the, the, the the change it does tonality wise um, yeah so I hope this inspires you to use drum bus uh, you can use it separately on your kicks as well if your kick needs a bit of boom that's why I use it for a lot if I have a 909 kick maybe from the Ableton um, uh, you know the Ableton uh, 909 core kit and sometimes that lacks a bit of low end and I just add a drum bus to to put a bit more uh, boominess in it and it's a great way to create more harmonics in the low frequency as well as adding a bit of crunch in the mid range to make your hi-hats and claps uh, come out a bit more so hope this helps your productions uh, let me know if you like it by subscribing and commenting on the on the on the video share it with your friends and follow lessons in life on lessonsinlife.com and the facebook group we have um, on facebook where we share uh, ideas and plugins and um, all kinds of stuff so make sure to follow lessons in life thanks for your attention see you next week <laughs>